You know, sometimes you want multiple parts to stick together, but you want to do it in a way to make sure they stay together consistently, reliably, and continuously. So in this video, we're going to go through join-in features, how a lot of people design them, and some better ways of actually getting them made to have your parts stick together really well. So the first and most common type of joining feature is really just a tongue and a slot. And this is a decent way of doing it because it's easy. You make a square on one side and a square on another side, and then you have them slide together or press together. And this isn't a bad deal, but it's kind of not very useful because they don't hold together very well. But if you are designing these, make sure that you chamfer the insert just a little bit. That way it's able to wedge into the main slot. And then the 3D printed layer lines can actually cause them to lock together pretty reliably. But again, you don't have any sort of pull or forcing to make sure that there's no gap in between the two pieces. Also, it's just kind of cumbersome because there's a lot of tolerance issues within it. So this isn't the greatest type of locking feature, though it's the one that a lot of people go to. But let's move into one that's a little bit more robust. Another option that a lot of people use are T-slots. And T-slots are actually pretty decent because they actually have some lateral support, so I can't pull these apart and they're actually not too bad to design and you can actually use the same kind of chamfering on the top of the tongue itself so that it angles up and locks into there. And this is fine, but the problem is is that you now have several different tolerances to have to deal with. You also have a pretty complex first layer where this can warp and curl up when it's going down on the first layer if you're using a high warp material or want something that's robust in manufacturing. So even though it is functionally okay, it's not great, and again, you have the tolerance issues of having to keep that seam pulled together. And based on material shrinkage and other types of issues, this won't always work very well. So having something that is tight and flush, just like this, isn't always a very viable option. But there's an upgrade to the T-slot, and that is this. You can actually take the T-slot and curve it just a bit so that now you have taken the two outer flanges of the T-slot and instead of them being straight to where they press into a hole with a friction fit, they are instead acting like springs. So that now you have a part that is able to go into the slot and lock in so that now there is no jiggle, no tolerance issues at all, and you're able to have kind of flexible tolerances that you can deal with material shrinkage and other types of issues. The other thing that we've done is since we don't want this complex first layer on the part, we went ahead and angled this slot. And you can apply this to any of these, but by applying that angle, you now have a very simple square first layer that with some rounded filleted outer edges so that you have good corners. And then the rest of the complexity happens later in the print to where it's very easy to control and you don't have to worry about warpage on the bed or adhering to the bed. You just have it print. So you make sure that it's chamfered there and then the two outer flanges are chamfered as well. And now you have something that can lock together super tightly, super reliably, has no jiggle and has a very nice tight seam that will always be a very nice tight seam. The one downside of this is that you have basically this hole in the bottom of your part, which isn't always necessarily desirable, but you would also have the hole in your bottom of the part with any other types of slots, just have it outlined. So, so long as this is a non-customer facing feature, it can work pretty well. But there's some other types of slots that we can use. One of the more common ones is the eye slot where you use a circular flange for the tongue. Now, the benefit of this is that it is easier to design than the T-slot because you're not doing all the XY tolerancing that is necessary. You just have one single circle that is dead centered dimensionally to the other circle. And then of course you chamfer this so that the two of them can lock together. And again, you get that advantage of 3D printed layer lines basically binding together so that it doesn't really wanna come apart very easily if it's a really tight one and you should have a decent flushness. But again, the other problem with tongues in general is that you can have this spread at the top, this angling to where the bottom slot is holding together, but the top of the part is not held together. So it kind of flexes like this. And that again is a problem with those kind of short stumpy slots. You can of course make them deeper, but then you're dealing with a lot more friction in putting them together because this can be a decent amount of effort to put together. But the eye slot is really useful because it's very easy to design, very easy to tolerance, and is generally a nice looking design. It is also technically a simpler first layer. So if you have a tongue that has to be printed face down to where this has to be against the bed and you can't do the angled thing that we showed on the spring 
T-slot. This is a way to get around that because these are nice smooth curves all the way around so there's a low chance of warping or any sort of other issues on first layer that can come up. But you can also take the eye tongue and slot and change them just a little bit. You can actually use grip fins. Now grip fins are a flexible feature that you have to design pretty carefully. They cannot be connected to the roof of it, but they are these small tabs all the way around the hole. And these small tabs allow you to take a much larger eye tongue and shove it right in there to where it locks in and you have the flexibility of these outer features holding it in place. Now you can have it be a rigid feature like the regular eye slot to where you just have a very low tolerance hole right there which can be useful in certain situations because it gives you some flexibility. But it's also useful to actually make flexible joints or semi-flexible joints to where you can use those grip fins to hold on to the eye tongue so that you get just a little bit of give inside of there. And it also pushes back and forth and you have flexibility throughout while still holding on to the part reliably and centering it. And you can change the stiffness of these fins by making them thicker, making them longer, so that they grip that eye tongue even harder than they normally would. But all of these assume that you have to use tongues where two separate parts insert into each other like this. And while this is fine, it's not very robust. And again, you have that first layer problem. None of these really pull it in except for the flexible T-slot. So what is a design that we could actually use where we take advantage of 3D printing really at a large scale? Because all of these parts can pretty much be made with any other process except for the grip fins, which are impossible. They use an impossible geometry. What if we could take all of these, put them together and make something that can't really be made any other way? Well, if you were to do that, you would end up with something like this. Now, these are just locking tabs. And the reason these don't really exist generally is because they are impossible to manufacture. This internal hole right here has two recesses inside of it, which cannot actually be machined or manufactured or molded with anything other than 3D printing. So what we are able to do is create those two recesses and then create two locking bumps on either side of this part so that these two little tongues, these flanges flex just a little bit and now you're able to take them and press them into that slot and have it lock. You can change the tolerances so they pull tighter. You can also change these bumps so that they are actual locking. Right now we made them bi-directional so you put it together and pull it back apart. So if you're making a building kit, this can be really useful, but you can make these so that they lock in there permanently and pull it in super tight so that there is no flexure at all. But it's very quick and easy to assemble and you don't have to deal with all the other tolerance issues of the other pieces or the first layer issues. In addition to this, we also print these parts just like this. So this brick actually sits on the build plate like this and these flanges do not need any sort of support at all because we angled them on the bottom. So this part can come off fully complete. This part can come off fully complete. They have very simple first layers where we don't have to be concerned about uh, some complexity that would cause them to fail or warp and they lock together very quickly and easily and they give you an advantage that has never been possible before. So if given the option, I would recommend doing these because these use just a smidgen less material, they're more reliable, they're easier to assemble and work with, they're also fairly easy to tolerance. So if given the choice between all of these locking tabs, I would use these. But hopefully that gives you some insight as to how to design locking features or joining features so that multiple parts of either terrain or an architecture model or maybe just a building kit can be put together in a way that is reliable and very manufacturable without having to worry about high cost or high rejection rates because of complexity inside of the model itself. Let us know if there's other basic features out there in 3D printing that you guys want us to cover. We try to go through all of these basics to know how to design a really good mass production 3D printing part. So comment down below any ideas that you have. Have a great day, everybody.